These videos reach people on a worldwide level, but for today we're doing something a little more locally and looking at the best player from every state. Some states have brought in a ton of stars to the league, but then there's others that haven't brought any current players into the NBA. And along with that, there may be some surprises on players' hometowns and where they came from, and some surprises on how few or how many players have come from a certain place. But with all that said, let's start in alphabetical order with Alabama. The best two current players born in Alabama have got to be Eric Bledsoe and DeMarcus Cousins, which means the spot goes to Bledsoe. Cousins has played solid since returning from his injury, but he's still not the same player he used to be, at least yet. And even though Bledsoe still needs to work on his three-point shot, he still definitely takes the spot. Alaska. Carlos Boozer, Mario Chalmers, and Trajan Langdon were the only players to ever come from Alaska, so right now there's no one currently in the league from there. Arizona. Kevin Knox and Marvin Bagley were both born in Arizona, and as of right now, Bagley's clearly the better player. The man was underrated last season, and he wasn't talked about too much because he was forced to come off the bench for the entire year, which probably played a part in why Dave Yeager got fired. But even off the bench, he still put up an impressive 15 and 7, so it's going to be great to see what he can do in a starting role, hopefully next season. Arkansas. Not too many players were born in Arkansas, but Mike Conley is definitely their top current player by a good margin. And while he was just traded to the Utah Jazz, the move alone doesn't make them serious threats in the West or anything, but it's a great start towards getting there. Conley is 31 though, so they gotta make some moves quick. California. California by far is one of the states to produce one of, if not the most NBA players and NBA stars. With guys like Klay Thompson, Damian Lillard, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, Aaron Gordon, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and DeMar DeRozan all being born there, just to name a few of the best. But that means this spot goes to NBA champion Kawhi Leonard, since he's the best player in the world right now. Colorado. Goes to Derek White. I mean, Derek White's the only current player to come from Colorado, so he takes the spot by default, but he's still a good player. Connecticut. And then the same goes for Chris Dunn, who's the only NBA player born in Connecticut. And then there's Delaware, who's produced no one currently in the league. I mean, some of these states might still have star athletes, but basketball's just not big there, and their athletes all play other sports, like football instead. But next is Florida, who's brought in Vince Carter, Trevor Ariza, and Jordan Clarkson. Carter's too old for the spot now, and Clarkson could have it in a few years if he keeps progressing, but for right now, Trevor Ariza takes it for his ability on both ends. Speaking of him though, it's going to be real interesting to see what playoff team he ends up on this year. And then there's surprisingly a lot of great players born in Georgia, including Dwight Howard, Jalen Brown, Malcolm Brogdon, Derek Favors, Colin Sexton, and Wendell Carter. And I think I gotta give this one to Brogdon, at least for now. Jalen's clearly the better defender, and might have the brighter future, but for now, I think Brogdon's a big time scorer that's been definitely underrated. And then there's Hawaii and Idaho who have no current NBA players. But Illinois has brought in players like Derrick Rose, Anthony Davis, Andre Iguodala, and Jabari Parker. And AD is by far the best out of all of them, and it doesn't even need an explanation. Indiana will probably give the spot to Eric Gordon for now. He's one of the league's better six men, and overall two-way players. Gordon Hayward's also from Indiana, but until he proves he can play like his old self again, he doesn't deserve the spot. Iowa. Shockingly, Iowa's best players aren't too exciting. No offense, Iowa. But Harrison Barnes beats out Kyle Korver as their best hometown player. And while we're on the subject of Harrison Barnes, can we take a moment of silence for whatever must have happened to Barnes? For him to turn down his $25 million player option? I mean, he's not going to be getting that money anywhere else for next season. And it's something I post about on Instagram too. I've had one for a while, but just started posting more frequently about things that are similar to what you see on this channel. Whether it's updates on things that happen, or my opinions on topics that aren't big enough to make an entire video on. So if you're interested in things like that, the link's in the description if you want to follow me on there too. But anyways, yeah, Harrison Barnes for Iowa. Next is Kansas, which goes to Willie Colley Stein. Stein went 6 overall after looking good coming out of Kentucky, but now instead, at best, he's starting to look like he's going to be a great backup center, similar to a JaVale McGee type player that might not be as good of a shot blocker. And while he's a solid player on the Kings right now, they should definitely start looking for other options. Kentucky. Even though Kentucky has one of the best college programs in the country, all of their stars are recruited there because only Rajon Rondo and D'Angelo Russell were actually born there, which makes D'Angelo the clear best player. Louisiana. De'Aaron Fox beats out Paul Millsap by a good margin, and Fox is only going to get better. 
I don't think this Kings team can make the playoffs next year because they're probably going to need 50 wins to do so. But as long as Fox and Heal continue to develop, they're still on the right track. And then there's nobody from Maine. But Maryland has brought in more guys than I would have expected with Rudy Gay, Josh Hart, Markel Fultz, and Maryland's best Victor Oladipo, who's still injured right now. But I feel like he's going to have the best year of his career this upcoming season. And with how Indiana was able to hold their own after he went down, there's a very good chance that happens. The best that Massachusetts has produced is the two former 76ers who looked promising and then fell off of a cliff. And it's a tough choice who's the least worst between Michael Carter Williams and Nerlens Noel. But we'll give this one to Noel. And I might be being a little harsh on him for now, but he could still turn things around eventually. Michigan. Unlike Massachusetts, Michigan's brought in some talent, with Draymond Green, Kyle Kuzma, and Devin Booker all being born there. I've been critical of Devin Booker as an overall player in some recent videos, but in this one he still takes his spot because he still put up 27 a game last season. And he's improved every year, so it's going to be exciting to see if he does the same for this upcoming season. Minnesota. The only current player whose hometown state is Minnesota is Mike Muscala. Mississippi. Again, only one NBA player, but at least this one's an upgrade with Rodney Hood. But then there's Missouri, who gave us Bradley Beal, Jason Tatum, and Otto Porter. Otto Porter can earn back his reputation with his first full season in Chicago this year. Jason Tatum could possibly break out without Kyrie Irving, but Bradley Beal's the one that's proven himself as already being a star in the NBA. So he's the best for Missouri. Montana, shockingly, has produced no current players. And the same goes for Nebraska. Pretty much the same for Nevada, except they gave Zach Collins and then nobody from New Hampshire. But then there comes New Jersey, where Carl Anthony Towns and Kyrie Irving are the most notable players to come from there, which makes Kyrie their top player. I would have thought there were more players to be born here since it's so close to New York, who produces so many guys. But that wasn't the case. As for Irving though, we've still yet to see where he's going to end up. I mean, first it was New York, then the Nets, and now signs are pointing to the Lakers with LeBron and AD, which has got to be the best option for him, but I really don't want to see another dominant super team right as the Warriors are about to break up. So hopefully that doesn't happen. And then there's New Mexico, who has only given us Andre Roberson currently and hasn't really given many more players in NBA history besides that. But I did forget Roberson existed for a while there. I mean, he's been out since last January, so hopefully OKC gets him back early this upcoming season. Next is New York, who's produced the second most NBA players besides California, with guys like Kimba Walker, Donovan Mitchell, Andre Drummond, and Tobias Harris. All of those guys are great, but New York's best definitely goes to Kimba. And then unlike Kentucky, North Carolina also has one of the biggest college programs, but has also produced their share of good amount of great players, with the likes of CP3, John Wall, Brandon Ingram, and Montrez Harrell. Ingram and Harrell still have exciting futures, and John Wall's sadly probably going to miss the entire season, so for now Chris gets this spot, but probably won't in another year or two. North Dakota's best is Tyler Johnson, who's probably the league's most overpaid player at this point. It's the last year of his insane contract, and it still makes as little sense now as it did when the Heat gave it to him. No surprise that the Suns are stuck with it though. Also, no surprise that it was their best attempt at getting a point guard last year. Ohio. When most NBA fans think of Ohio, they also think of LeBron. But now Steph Curry's taken over as their best player. I mean, when you think about it, overall it's a random state to produce two of the league's top five players. But not only that, they were both born in Akron too. Steph does rank over LeBron here though, because I think he's got the bigger overall impact on his team at this point in his career. Oklahoma easily goes to Blake Griffin, who we felt bad for last year when he had to go from LA to Detroit. But now we should feel bad because the Pistons probably won't end up getting him any real help for the entire time he's there. Oregon. There's not too many great players from Oregon. The best are DeMontis Sabonis, Jeremy Grant, and Terrence Ross. Ross played great in Orlando last year, but Sabonis is still the better player. And if the Pacers don't bring back Thaddeus Young for next season, we're going to get to see how good he is as a starter. Pennsylvania. The Moores twins, Deion Waiters, Michael Kidd Gilchrist, and Kyle Lowry were all born in Pennsylvania. And Lowry beats them all out with no explanation needed. No NBA players were born in Rhode Island, unsurprisingly, and not many were born in South Carolina with Chris Middleton being the best player. 
and then again no one from South Dakota, but Tennessee has given us Lou Williams and JJ Redick, both great players that are having their best years late in their careers but Lou's clearly better. At first thought, Tennessee doesn't seem like it would have produced a lot of current players, which it hasn't, but then you think about the fact that they have the Grizzlies, and I would have expected that would have produced some more players. A state that does have their own team and doesn't have that problem though is Texas, who's produced LaMarcus Aldridge, Jimmy Butler, and a lot of young players in Julius Randle, Miles Turner, Trey Young, Marcus Smart, and Jared Allen. And maybe one day one of these young guys can take this spot, but it's Jimmy's right now. And not even Aldridge is really competition for him at this point. And then after Texas is Utah, whose best player is John Collins, who doesn't get talked about as much as he should. I mean, I guess a guy from what is currently a bad Hawks team can only get so much attention, and Trey Young was getting all of that for most of this year. But as the team gets better, I wouldn't be surprised if both of them become all-stars soon. And the team will definitely be getting better soon, because they're currently putting together one of the best rebuilds in the league. And then Vermont has barely ever produced an NBA player. Virginia has given us Mike Scott. And then there's Washington who has contributed with the finally aged Jamal Crawford. Isaiah Thomas who's sadly no longer a star. And then Zach Levine. The spot goes to Zach and let's hope he can put together another career year next season. West Virginia has no NBA players. Wisconsin graced us all with Sam Decker. And James Johnson came from Wyoming. And with that thriller of an ending, that's going to wrap things up for the best player from every state. Like I said at the beginning, some states had a ton of players and others had very few if any. But if there were any surprises here or if you just enjoyed the video at all, definitely comment down below and let me know. Don't forget to give my Instagram a follow, subscribe, and I'll catch you next video.